What is up, guys? Welcome to the John the Potter Studios. It's so good to have you in the studio today. Today's video, we're talking about the 10 steps to becoming a potter. This is one of the most common questions I get all the time. Should I buy a wheel in a kiln? How do I get started? How do I start making stuff like, look so fun and cool? And I wanna lay out some steps, and you can switch around the order if you want, but basically, just starting out, thinking about doing pottery, all the way to having your own studio and what goes in between there. First, I wanna tell you guys about some exciting things happening in 2021. So we have Etsy sales coming up. So we took a little bit of a break, but now you can see we are back to throwing pots. We're back to glazing. We are back to making some sweet stuff. I already have a few things that are ready to go. So the dates are gonna be February 7th, March 15th, April 11th, and May 9th. So those are gonna be all the Etsy sales for the springtime. Then we'll have another batch of that comes up for the summer and then the fall and the winter will be another batch. Mug March Madness is coming up. So in March, we're gonna be doing what we did last year where I pair up 64 of my best mugs against each other and you guys vote on Instagram, like which one you like better and then we have one winner and then I end up making a bunch of free mugs and sending them out to you guys if you participate. Definitely wanna be around for that. One of my goals for 2021 is to actually not make quite as many videos, but to make the videos that I make even better. And so this started with the, the video I put up last week about the, making the 72 custom mugs. Like I spent a ton of time on that video. So Sundays at noon, is gonna be my goal, is every Sunday at noon, I'm gonna put up a new video. So you can look out for all the new videos Sunday at noon. All right, I think that's it for quick announcements. Let's get into the video. Boom, okay, so the first step in becoming a potter is to develop an interest, right? The first thing that you can do is say, that looks cool, I wanna try that, I wanna make some sweet stuff out of clay, where do I go next? So if you're in this video, then you're probably already at one step or beyond, all right? Step number two would be figure out a way to get your hands in clay without really spending a lot of money or time on it. So taking a class would be a great example. So finding a local art center, and I know during this time with the pandemic and COVID, it might be difficult, more difficult, but lots of times art centers will uh, offer classes or local potters will offer classes or the community college. Um, really the best way is to start, because a lot of people think they wanna do pottery, uh, but then when it comes down to it, it might be a little bit more difficult or more expensive or not quite what they thought in the first place. So take a class, figure out a way to get your hands in clay and start working with it. All right, number three is to kind of start your own research and your own interests and developing yourself. And so last year I wrote a book called Practical Pottery and this is a great book for beginners. I wrote this book especially for people uh, that wanted to get into pottery that hadn't done a lot in the past. And so that's a great way. There's tons and tons of free content on the internet, including my YouTube channel, which you are here right now. So I don't need to tell you about that. But other YouTube pottery YouTube channels that I love, Earth Nation Ceramics, Dante over at Earth Nation does a great job with tutorials and teaching. Tim C is super smart guy, knows a ton about pottery. Matthew Kelly Pottery is one of my favorite YouTubers to follow. Um, who else? There's tons of free content. You can search blogs, you can search on the internet. So go out there, research, start to figure out all the different things because pottery is such a, such a wide world and there's so many different way, avenues that you can go. Starting to do your own research after like, be, like working with clay a little bit is really important. Step four is to start to explore artists form and function. And so if you have worked with clay a little bit, you've done some research, you've read the book Practical Pottery, you've watched some John the Potter YouTube videos and other YouTube videos, now you wanna like find the artist that you want to replicate. Maybe it's some of my stuff, maybe it's someone else's, uh, and start to like learn about their process and learn about what makes them unique, why they do the things that they do, what kind of clay they use, what kind of glazes, high fire, low fire, gas fire, electric fire, just the, it's crazy the amount of different variables within the clay process. And so it's really nice to be able to hone in on someone's style and say, I wanna to start to make that. And this is a temporary step. You do not want to sit at one artist's style and just keep hammering away at that. The point is to try and find one and then try and start to replicate it or make your work look like that. Step five, you can only take so many classes. And so step five is to 
how are you gonna keep continuing to learn and improve your skills without yet buying your own things yet? That's the point here is I get so many people that contact me and are like, what kind of wheel should I buy? What kind of kiln should I buy? Like, I've never done pottery before, but I'm setting up a studio and it's like, oh man, setting up a studio is very expensive and time consuming and you really wanna make sure that you are able to produce enough work to pay for this habit because it is expensive. There's so many people out there that at one time thought, I'm gonna get so into pottery, I'm gonna buy a wheel, I'm gonna buy a kiln. And that's lucky for you because hopefully you get to buy their stuff when they're ready to sell it and it hasn't been used for years and years and years. So the point of these steps is I wanna make sure that you guys are not getting into something that you're just gonna buy you know, a $3,000 kiln and a $1,000 wheel and it's just gonna sit in your garage. So the step five is to find an apprenticeship, find a local studio assistant type thing. Like I did a, when I was in college, I was a studio assistant uh, after taking three classes before I ever bought my own wheel or kiln. Uh, and then when I did buy my own wheel or kiln, it was very used and inexpensive. So reach out to your local potters, see if they need an apprentice. Um, I've had probably six to seven different people throughout the years that have helped me in the studio that I've had to teach a lot of clay things. And so I'm constantly having people in here that help me out. Uh, so if there's a lot of potters out there that you can learn from and that are willing to take on um, someone just to, for some extra hands. So step six would be explore the possibilities for distribution. So what are you gonna actually do with the pots once you start making them? Because there's nothing worse than making hundreds and hundreds of pots and then just having them sit there. And so along this process of learning, you need to start finding avenues to sell. So I have a great video about like the five different ways to sell anywhere from retail to online to, I've talked a lot about the different ways to sell pottery in the past. And so you can never start thinking about what you're gonna do with the pots that you produce too early, right? Like. Try and think about how you're gonna grow that Instagram following or are you gonna sell online? Or are you gonna sell in your local coffee shop in your local art gallery? Um, start thinking about that because once you have your own wheel and kiln, then you need to start thinking about how you're gonna pay for that studio setup. Okay, so now we've reached step seven. So this is usually what people think of as step one, but we've reached step seven, which is explore studio options for yourself. So you've taken classes, you've done your own research, you've read books, you've re watched YouTube videos, you've apprenticed or a studio uh, assistant at a local art gallery or clay shop. You've thought about how you're gonna sell your pottery or what you're gonna do to distribute it. Now it is time to explore your studio options. So do you have a basement that you isn't really being used? Is your garage able to either be, if you live in a cold area, maybe you can insulate it and heat it. Um, is there like, a shared studio space that you can share with some other potters in your local area. There's a lot of different studio options and now we can start thinking about what are your studio options to work in um, and then is it worth like are you gonna buy a wheel and a kiln at some point? But there's a lot of local clay community type studios where you can share with others. That's a really great way to start out before you have to build out your own studio. Okay so step seven is explore studio options. Step eight would be to start to think about your own studio. So maybe the clay community studio is closed because of COVID or it's not close enough or you really think that you are in this for the long haul, you're gonna be making pots and selling pots, it's gonna be so fun, it's gonna be awesome. Now you can think about buying a wheel and kiln. So there are, like I said before, there are often used kilns and used wheels for sale because people get into this hobby and then they realize they don't wanna spend the time or they can't spend the time or they don't make enough money or they don't make any money. So my first kiln that I found, I researched and found a, a kiln on Craigslist from a lady that uh, I think it was her daughter's and she never really used it. I bought it for $200. It was a manual uh, one where you had to flip switches. So for the first six hours of firing, you had to be there flipping switches, which is a great way to learn about kilns. Don't get me wrong. I went down there, it was in such good shape and I bought that thing and brought it home and my parents installed the electricity. The electricity to the kiln actually costs more than the kiln itself. So keep that in mind when you're researching kilns is you have to have electrical uh, run to the kiln for it to really work. Uh, and then I found a wheel, an Amico um, Brent wheel 
that was in really good shape. And I think I bought that for 600. So $600 for the wheel, $200 for the kiln. I had the beginnings of my initial studio. So I would always say, look for, look for big brands. Like the, my, my recommendation for buying a wheel and kiln would be to look used, but look for the brands that you recognize. Like the big brands for kilns would be Scut, they would be Paragon, l and Olympic. Uh, the big brands for wheels would be also Scut. That's the kind of wheel that I have right now. Uh, Shimpo, Clay Boss, brands that you recognize. Um, and you can easily look up and say that they are still selling parts, like they will still be repairable uh, and that sort of thing. So now you have your own studio set up. Either you're working in this in a community studio, but you have the ability to work with clay as much as you want. Now you start to develop your own style. Back in step four, we talked about exploring other artists' forms and functions. Um, you don't wanna stay on that. You want to start to develop your own style. And that comes from spending a lot of time on the wheel, spending a lot of time glazing, trying different things, a lot of trial and error. Um, and so developing your own unique style is something that everybody wants to do. And I'm continuing to do it. Like that's what I'm doing this whole month is I'm just testing new stuff and trying out new things. That's what step nine is. Go get it, go get it, go get your own style. And then number 10 is make and sell pots and be a potter. So those are my 10 steps to becoming a potter. I actually was taking this right out of this book. This was a section that I wrote for the book was 10 steps to becoming a potter. Uh, right under that, under that is common clay weight for different pieces. Boy, that's something that I looked at all the time when I was first starting out was someone's graph of like, if I want a medium mug, how much clay should I start with? Talk about another common question that people ask all the time. But anyway, these are available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. You can go check it out if you want. I'd much appreciate it. As well as tune into the videos Sundays at noon. And the Etsy, we have just so much going on. I, I have a big trip planned for the end of March that I'm gonna keep a secret right now, but it's gonna be awesome and I'm gonna make so many videos about it and it's, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna blow my mind and maybe it'll blow your mind too. All right, it feels like it's been a while since I've sat down and just like talked to the camera for a whole video, but here we go, we did it, we did it. All right, as always, leave me a comment with any of the videos you guys wanna see, what are you struggling with? Uh, hopefully this video helped you out. 10 steps to becoming a potter. All right, subscribe, like, share, all the things. See you guys in the next video.